My Lords, it is a tremendous privilege to make my maiden speech in Your Lordship's house. It has been quite the journey getting to this moment, and I am immensely grateful for the guidance and advice that so many noble Lords have offered me. I am especially grateful to my noble friends and supporters, Lady Foster of Oxton and Lady Mayor, and my noble friends and wonderful mentors, Lady Morris of Bolton and Lady Sackham. I would like to express my gratitude to Blackrod, the clerks, the doorkeepers, everyone who works in the house, and the special advisers who have helped me navigate my first few weeks in the role. I am also most grateful for the friendship and support of all my friends in the other place, who I've had the honour of working with for a number of years. A peerage is both an honour and a responsibility. It is a responsibility I take incredibly seriously. It is testament to the high level of discourse in this place that debate can be robust, yet incredibly collegiate. I have been overwhelmed by the welcome of noble lords across your Lordship's house, all of whom have said how important it is for younger voices to be part of your Lordship's deliberations. My lords, I am part of a generation whose unique opportunities are also accompanied by new challenges. From the difficulty of getting onto the housing ladder to the spiralling cost of university debt, the complexities of living in a social media age, and the very real fear over our climate. We live in a time of great change. It is a confusing time. It is also a time of instability and anxiety. This is perhaps so for everyone, but it is surely so for the young. My Lords, I was born in 1993. George Michael was still at number one, and the Spice Girls were about to set in motion a wave of girl power. I'm a child of the dial-up internet connection, where mobile phones were only for phone calls, and the World Wide Web was about to be launched to the public. Throughout my life, I have witnessed not only the benefits of our ever closer relationship with technology, but sadly, also the threats that such advances can bring. This is an issue of great and increasing concern to me, as I'm sure it should be to us all. I have followed with great interest the Online Safety Bill. This bill represents a landmark in online safety, and I was delighted that my vote contributed to making the UK one of the safest places in the world to be online something of which this government should be hugely proud. However, the online world is evolving at pace, and we should not be complacent. I am greatly encouraged that the UK has shown leadership by hosting the first global summit on artificial intelligence, and that the gracious speech reaffirmed the UK's commitment to leading international discussions to ensure its safe development. I look forward to addressing both the challenges and opportunities that technology, and in particular AI, present. I must also thank the former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who put a great deal of trust in me, and I will be forever grateful, not only for this, but for his kindness and encouragement. I feel immensely privileged to have worked with him and other Cabinet Ministers during my time at Number 10. I was delighted that his commitment to delivering the referendum result, his optimism, his vision for levelling up the country and for ensuring that life chances are fairly distributed, resulted in the seismic election victory of 2019. My Lords, I wish to take a moment to pay tribute to my parents, and especially my dear late father. Born in Anston in 1930, he was a child during the war and would often tell me of the horrors of those days. Such as the time he went cycling with his brother, and they had to jump off their bikes and take cover, as a Messerschmitt 109 machine gun a passing freight train. Another time, the windows of his family home were blown out when the house opposite took a direct hit during the Manchester Blitz. 
Despite this, my father always had a positive outlook on life. I like to think that this is a quality he instilled in me. He didn't even complain when his retirement plans changed because of my arrival in the world. <laughs> when I was a small girl, he would often tell me it was possible to achieve anything that you put your mind to. It was aspiration and the desire to get on in life that helped shape my parents' politics. My mother has told me of how her own parents' lives changed when Margaret Thatcher's government gave them the opportunity to buy the council house in Old Liège, allocated to my grandfather on his return from the war, a policy I'm sure most of your lordships remember and for which some of your lordships were perhaps responsible. <laughs> my grandmother was so delighted by this policy that she went around knocking on all her neighbours' doors to let them know about this life-changing opportunity. Owning their own home up until that point was beyond their wildest dreams. It seems, my lords, that levelling up was alive and well decades ago. Mm. It is vital that we create a climate where younger generations have the chance of home ownership so they too can feel secure for their future. My lords, I end where I began with thanks and express my gratitude to all noble lords for the warmth of their welcome and the kindness shown to me. During my time in your lordship's house, I hope to repay that kindness. It is 65 years since the first Baroness and the first life peer, Baroness Elliot of Harwood, made her maiden speech in this house, also on the fourth day of the debate on the gracious speech. And it is therefore a very auspicious day and my pleasure to congratulate the newest noble Baroness, Lady Owen, on her excellent maiden speech. L like those pioneering Baronesses 65 years ago, as my noble friend has just illustrated, she brings a fresh voice, new skills and energy, which those who remember thinking dial-up internet and the Spice Girls were cutting edge <coughs> are going to need as we navigate the future for science, technology, media and culture. Um, I am sure my noble friend has many years um, has many years ahead of her in this house, but whether, like um, Baroness Elliot of Harwood, she votes against the government and becomes known as the despair of the whips, <laughs> only time will tell. My lords, we welcome those who work hard and who show commitment. My noble friend does both, and therefore I warmly welcome her today, and I look forward to her future contributions in the years ahead. Looking to the future, one of the challenges that we need to address with some urgency is the future of broadcasting as we move